Hi guys, I'm Aisha Scott. I'm a filmmaker based in the UK. I have been making films now for the past eight years. I run my own production company, A Scott Production. So my films are all independently made. And yeah, I'm hoping to change that soon as I am going into production with my feature film, which will be a global release. So yeah, I hope to share some content with you guys soon. All right, that's interesting. All right, Aisha, let's do it this way. Give me a little background about you because here we talk about ourselves, where we are coming from, who we are, <laughs> uh, then before we talk about what we do. So let's try to know you. Okay, so I was brought up in Deptford, which is, which used to be, I should say, a quite a rough part of the UK in South London. So I grew up as a little bit of a rebel. So um, what was that like? <laughs> so I grew up um, as a little bit of a rebel, not really having much direction, but I was always into the art. So used to do poetry, so I used to recite poetry, I used to do acting, so I initially began my career as an actress at the Anna Share Theatre School, did that for a good seven to eight years, was featured in quite a few um, TV series, online web series, um, TV commercials, I've done billboards because I did a bit of modelling as well back in the day, and then I sort of rolled into my filmmaking career around about 2011. And yeah, that's sort of um, where it all stems from. So you were saying the, the place where you grew up was rough, uh, sort of, okay, it was rough or something like that. Uh, then you were uh, a kind of a rebel, as it were, no? Can you be more specific in that? Give us some feeling because you are, <laughs> we are trying to understand your background. Okay, so growing up, I grew up in a gang. So I was a part of a um, street gang in London, a girl gang. And yeah, it was pretty rough. And it was all that you knew, really, because in the area, when you grow up in sort of deprived communities, then it's all sort of based around um, violence and sort of street life that's what you know as a young child growing up like that's all you see around so yeah I grew up in a gang um used to get into a lot of trouble so got arrested many many times got suspended from school like I barely used to attend school to be honest so I'm very fortunate to where I've come to today um what else did you would you want to know so <laughs> how is it even like to be uh Young adolescent that are maybe uh, involved in gang thing. Can you say anything about that? So I would just say to young people, do not get involved in gangs. But unfortunately for me, I grew up in a gang, and I think it was more of like um, it's almost like it's it's not really um, a gang. It's more like you grow up in groups. So it's like sisterhood because it was a girl gang. So you create, there's like a group of friends and you got each other's back because you grow up in a rough community. So you could be fighting. There could be days when you're walking to school and someone from another area sees you that you've got like issues with, like you've got beef with and then you have to end up in a fight. So one time coming home from school, I ended up getting stabbed in my leg. And, Sorry um, about that. Yeah. <laughs> that's the sort of thing that you had to go through. So being in a gang was more like protection and it was more like your sort of sisterhood. So you always knew that you one of your gang members had your back. So if anything happened to you, you always got protected in that light. So, um yeah, it was pretty rough, but it wasn't long drawn out. So I was probably got into sort of gang life from around about 12, 13. And by the time I was like 17, I was sort of on a better path, like going college and things like that. So, yeah, it was pretty rough, but it, it couldn't be avoided, I would have said, because it was just sort of like the community. Sometimes you're given a circumstance, but you don't, that don't have to be your reality. So even though I grew up in a rough community and that's what the sort of 
starting point of my life involved, it, it's not the end. For the fact that you were part of this gang, did it in any way maybe uh, show you the way to go in the society, maybe helpful to you in what you become today? I definitely think that that sort of um, starting point in my life was a part of who I am today. So it taught me a lot of things because when you grow up in that sort of environment, you are fearless. So you don't, you're not really scared of anything. So that taught me to sort of like go for my dreams because I was not fearful of anything. So I never really sort of had that thing of fear. So I was just sort of tenacious from a young age. I'd be like, I want to do this. And nothing could stop me because I just thought, I'm a bad girl. <laughs> I can do what I want. So definitely think that think that it shaped me to who I am. It taught me about different variations of life and different circumstances that people are put into and just wanting better for yourself as well. But I would never regret sort of going through that because, as you said, everything in life is a part of who we are and who we become. So I'm grateful for that sort of starting point in my life because it has made me who I am today. That is important now. So um, Aisha, how did you define your identity as a teenager in Britain? Because later on, of course, we're going to be talking about um, black British, female black Br British, you know? But before yeah. we get there, I've tried to understand, how did you define your own identity while you were still growing up as a young adolescent? So, because um, it was sort of like, a, a, I grew up in a black community, so everyone around you was sort of from similar roots. So I grew up, I came from a single parent home, so most of the people around me was from a single parent home. And when you're sort of in that gang life, I feel like you are sort of narrow-minded. So that is your world so you don't really look outside of that and in terms of like fitting in as someone in the UK it was just like this was my community this was all I knew so I just saw myself as like like I obviously at that point I didn't really see that there was a way out of that life and I just thought like I'm just a black girl from a black community and like broken homes and sort of poverty and that was sort of my world in the UK it was only till like growing up that you sort of expand and then you get different pair groups and start going to college and university and getting a job and things like that so then you sort of branch out of that into more understanding and how you can be restricted in terms of like being like a black woman growing up in society of like not getting um, job roles and not fitting in as you thought you did sort of growing up because it was all safe because you grew up in a community with everyone that looked like you and it was sort of like everyone was the same. All right, now you're a filmmaker, you're a storyteller. You are someone who is sort of trying to interpret the society. So tell me, how did that start with you? So, um, as I like was said earlier, I've always been a storyteller. So I started out um, doing poetry. So I used to do poetic stories and I used to recite them. And the stories were always sort of stemming from my experiences. So it was always based around sort of like um, black on black crime, um, domestic violence. It was always sort of um, created on my world and I used to like telling stories so from from like doing poetry and stuff like that and writing stories because I wrote like two poetry books when I was like 14 and um, from there I sort of ended up doing acting that sort of falls into like the story form and stuff as well because I just am obsessed with films like ever since I was young I've always just just something about movies just always sort of um, gave me my imagination and made me saw that there was a bigger world out there. So I was always sort of fascinated with films and how they were told. 